In this video, we'll be talking about non-Hodgkin lymphoma. This is an overview and in subsequent videos, we would delve into the details. So stay tuned till the end. So non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is a diverse group of uh, lymphoid malignancies. That means the cancer of uh, lymphocytes. It includes B cell, T cell and natural killer cell. Predominantly B cell, but sometimes T cells and rarely natu natural killer cells. And it is characterized by proliferation of lymphoid cells in the lymph node and in the extranodal sites. So two things, it involves B cells and lymph node is the site of uh, the problem. So lymph node enlargement is a common theme in all kind of lymphomas. So let's see and let's dive into a bit more details. Here one has to understand that the non-Hodgkin part suggests to the absence of Reed-Steinberg cell which is otherwise present in Hodgkin lymphomas. So this is a distinguishing criteria. So obviously as we said in non-Hodgkin lymphomas the lymph nodes are affected. The T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes reside in the lymph node and in this case they proliferate rapidly and they are not dying and they kind of like keep on uh, dividing and they, they survive. So obviously they lead to this sort of malignancies. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is pretty common. Hodgkin lymphoma is actually rare and it represents 90% of all lymphomas. So it's obviously more common than Hodgkin's lymphoma and the age of onset is generally at the late some, some sort of like 60 years old, something like that. Now, so just to give you a quick clarification, there are two types of lymphoma, Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin. Hodgkin is characterized by the Reed-Steinberg cells, also known as the owl sign, which we have covered in a different video. Link is in the description. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is basically uh, involving majorly B cell related problems. Rarely T cell lineages are also involved. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of features of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So multiple lymph node could be involved and it all depends on what stage of the cancer it is. But anyway, there could be also involvement of extra nodal tissues, which we would uh, learn in details. Uh, there could be non-contiguous spread and we should understand the lymphocytes are uh, basically regulated by specific gene expression and many of the genetic changes and mutations or chromosomal changes turn these T or B cell into extremely proliferative one and their over proliferation is the often cause of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and that's the recurrent theme and another site where these kind of problems are happening is the lymph node now once there are too many of these B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes the lymph node would anyway become enlarged that's what is seen in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So lymph node is the site. Externally, one can see these swollen lymph node creating a lump in different regions of the body. So this is known as nodal lymphoma. Just like nodal lymphoma, there are extranodal sites. For example, it can uh, in innervate skin, stomach and other places of the body. Okay, so here is a quick overview of the things that we are going to look at. So we are going to look at several types of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I hope you understood the basics of it. Now let's build up on this framework. So there is marginals. So inside the lymph node, there are specific regions known as uh, T cell zone and the B cell zone. The B cells reside in the follicles mostly. So basically there are different subcategory of these or sub levels of these uh, follicle like marginal zone, mantle zone, germinal zone and depends on where these over proliferative uh, B cells reside, the names of these lymphomas are different. In this video we would try to appreciate that. So let's begin our journey. So before we try to understand what goes wrong in these lymphomas, we have to first understand how B cell development takes place in the lymph, in the lymph, lymph nodes. So B cells are born in the bone marrow, but they reside eventually in the lymph node. So here you can see a lymph node, here you can see a follicle, and there are the afferent and efferent uh, lymphatics. So it's basically the entry and the exit points. Dendritic cells and other antigen presenting cells enter the lymph node. So basically T, B and uh, 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 T cell, B cell and the dendritic cells kind of like interact inside the lymph node. 
So there are outer cortex, medulla, paracortex. Uh, these are the overall demarcations of the lymph node. So paracortex is a region which is T cell heavy. Follicle is a region which is B cell heavy. Anyway, there are like interaction between dendritic cells and T cells and B cells happening all the time. So you can imagine this scenario like an army barrack. So in an army base, there are dedicated uh, region for let's say SEAL team or de de dedicated uh, barracks for rangers. Just like that, there are specific regions dedicated to T cell, specific regions dedicated to B cell. Anyway, in a histological slide, you can see this is how the follicle look like. And the external to the follicle is basically the paracortex where the T cell resides. So you can now understand which is the T cell and the B cell zone. Anything that falls in that yellow space is basically a B cell zone. And we are most importantly uh, looking at the B cell zone and the, uh, basically the overall uh, germinal center and the overall lymphatic fo follicle. So anyway, now we'll talk about uh, the process of the T cell and B cell interaction. First of all, the dendritic cell activates the T cell, T cell activation happens, T cell proliferates, increase in number. Eventually, T cell interacts with the B cell, lead to its activation. Now, when the B cell is activated, it would rapidly proliferate and create the germinal center, the center part of the lymphoid follicle. Now, basically, these cells are also known as centroblast. Activated B cell would undergo several molecular changes like affinity maturation, that means they would select for the T cell, B cells which has very high affinity for their B cell receptors. Also class switching would ensure that they produce only one subtype or isotype of an antibody. So this is known as class switching. All this thing is happening in the germinal center. Important things are happening in the germinal center. Now once we understand the basics, let's talk about the examples. Burkitt lymphoma is one of the lymphoma which affects the B cell proliferation. So Burkitt lymphoma is pretty common in African uh, adolescent and young adults. So the chromosomes that are involved in Bar Burkitt's lymphoma is chromosome number 8 and chromosome number 14. So basically in the chromosome number 8 there is a gene known as CMIC. It is responsible for growth, proliferation etc. In chromosome number 14 there is Ig heavy chain gene or IgH. Now, due to translocation between these two regions, what happens is the CMIC, which was supposed to be produced in a balanced fashion, is now overproduced because now it's under the influence of a very strong promoter. Anyway, Ig heavy chain, you can imagine in a B cell, this particular promoter should be very active. But when the CMIC comes closer to it, it gets highly influenced. Once CMIC is overproduced, there could be genes which regulates growth, survival and proliferation gets up kind of like haywire. So obviously they are all these kind of molecular processes are upregulated. This leads to over proliferation of the B cell in the germinal zone. So Burkitt's lymphoma histologically can be distinguished from other lymphomas by a characteristic starry sky appearance. Here you can see the dark background is basically specific lymphocytes. The basophilic lymphoma cells are representing the sky in this case. And there is something called uh, tingible bodies, which are basically phago uh, I mean basically macrophages, which has phagocytosed cellular debris and they appear like clear spaces and they are the stars in the sky. So the starry sky appearance is pretty common in case of Burkitt's lymphoma. Often one has to understand that Burkitt lymphoma can also be associated with Epstein-Barr virus infection. Also there are extraneural involvement like jaw lesions found in African children. Now in Africa, the extraneural involvement is basically involvement of the jaw and deformation of the jaw. But whereas in outside Africa, most of the cases, the external involvement leads to the involvement of the abdominal uh, lymph nodes, especially the ileocecal uh, junction lymph nodes. Anyway, in Africa, the Burkitt's lymphoma is associated with Epstein-Barr virus, whereas the other outside Africa, it's not really associated with Epstein-Barr viruses. So there are differences and case specificity, region specificity as well. Also, the relation between Epstein-Barr virus and lymphoma is not very well established. Okay, next we talk about diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. This is the most common subtype of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. 
So it ranges from 25 to 30% of all the non-Hodgkin lymphoma cases. So he, this is the uh, histological uh, presentation. You can see that there are many B lymphocytes bigger in size and over proliferative. So usually older adults are affected, but also 20% cases are coming from children. Genes like BCL2, BCL6 are actually affected in these case. Next, we talk about follicular lymphoma. Obviously, the name suggests the lymphoid follicles are affected. So we talked about the germinal center. We talked about the lymphoid follicle, right? There are three distinct zones, germinal zone, mantle zone, marginal zone. In follicular lymphoma, the germinal center B cells are affected. So here is an over proliferation of the B cells. Remember in the germinal center, important B cell processes are happening like class switching and affinity maturation. So strongly BCL2 gene is associated with this particular uh, follicular lymphoma. In a moment, it would be very clear. So in chromosome 18 and chromosome uh, 14, there is a translocation happen. As a result of translocation, BCL2 now comes under the influence of IgH. This is kind of similar to the Barkitt's lymphoma. So any gene that regulates a proliferation or cell division aspect comes under a heavy influence of a strong promoter like IgH. This led to overproduction of BCL2 and BCL2 is a molecule that prevents apoptosis. So it prevents the cells from dying because after a point of time when B cells are not able to like encounter pathogens, they would die and new B cells would be produced. But in this case, when BCL2 is upregulated, they cannot die because the apoptosis is prevented. Now, these, of, these kind of cancers are actually indolent that means they tend to grow at a very slower speed. So they are spread also in a very uh, slower speed. They are more manageable in terms of in clinical terms. So let's talk about the clinical presentations. So obviously lymphadenopathy is the most common pathological signature anyone can find in lymphomas. But uh, basically there could be cervical lymph nodes which are mostly most commonly affected. Other than axillary inguinal region, all of these lymph nodes are also uh, affected. So basically, there is an appearance known as waxing and waning lymphadenopathy. That simply means these size of these uh, lymph node would change. It would fluctuate over time. There is a waxing phase and a waning phase. So basically, waxing phase is a time when things become larger and waning phase is a smaller phase. So it, it's kind of switchable between phases. Anyway, so mantle cell lymphoma is the next topic of discussion occurrence is much more in the females compared to sorry occurrence is much more in the males compared to the females and here we talk about the genetics again here translocation happens and in this case the cyclin d1 gene or ccnd1 gene gets into the close vicinity of that strong igh promoter and you can see this igh promoter is that culprit it's a strong promoter. It influences random genes which are associated with growth, proliferation, and cell division. And that creates the over-proliferation phenotype. In this case, when there is basically too much cyclin D, cells would tend to go to the cell cycle and they would divide and grow. That lead to the over-proliferation of the B cells. And it is specific to the B cells in the mantle zone. That's how the name comes, the mantle zone. Mantle zone is kind of like the middle layer in the lymph follicle. So abnormal B cell uh, B lymphocytes are found in the uh, kind of like an outer edge of the lymph node and this is very very aggressive. This is one of the most aggressive lymphomas. Now we talk about the marginal zone lymphoma. So basically the over proliferative B cells are present in the external side of the follicle in the marginal zone. Okay so marginal zone lymphoma is considered to be rare. And this is, this is very rare among all the non-Hodgkin lymphoma types, accounting for approximately 10% of all the cases. Now, this is also associated with chronic gastritis, H. pylori infection, and autoimmune situations like Sogren syndrome. Okay, now what we learned so far, and if we collect and recollect all of them, we can understand many of these lymphomas are happening due to a chromosomal translocation. So chromosomal translocation is happening between chromosome number 14 and chromosome number 3. So 14 is kind of like a constant where IgH uh, gene is produced, uh, IgH gene is there. And due to translocation, many cell cycle regulator genes such as CMIC, BCL6 come closer to it. 
and these are the underlying pathology for diffuse large b cell lymphoma or burkitt lymphoma or let's say mantle cell lymphoma where ccnd1 gene comes near to igh or let's say follicular lymphoma where bcl2 gene comes near to the igh so we kind of look at the convergent theme and the convergent pathology underlying these burkitt lymph uh, underlying these non hodgkins lymphoma right so in short we looked at how different zones of uh, lymph node is affected in the b cell lymphoma so these are the non hodgkin lymphomas which affects the b cell most of the cases now we'll talk about the non hodgkin lymphoma which involves t cell now it can obviously affect t cells right so there are peripheral t cell lymphomas cutaneous t cell lymphomas anaplastic large cell lymphomas and there are many more one of the most common one is basically adult t cell leukemia or lymphoma so this happens due to a htlv virus infection this virus infects basically the t cells and lead to an overproduction or overexpression of tax and hbz uh, gene that lead to an overproliferation of these t cells and causing uh, non hodgkin lymphoma so diagnosis of the non hodgkin lymphoma can be done with imaging based studies like pet scan or pet ct scan so you can learn more about pet ct scan if you go to the video in the i button also you can see these are the lymph node which has uptaken a lot of glucose basically cancer cells are highly dividing so they need a lot of glucose for energy metabolism they uptake glucose this is how so this ct image actually give you an idea which tissues are uptaking very high glucose so you can see the lymph nodes are highly uh, basically stained by this particular place so basically there are other aspects by which one can do the diagnosis biopsy and there are different types of biopsy excisional biopsy incisional biopsy core needle biopsy bone marrow biopsy all these things can possibly done based on where the infection happened where 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 the uh, uh, spread happens etc uh, another thing is basically immunotyping uh, or molecular testing it's anyway very expensive so it's not prescribed by the doctors so non hodgkins lymphoma has different stages basically stage 1 where it is very localized single lymph node region is affected let's say only the lymph nodes in the neck region is affected it's more trackable more treatable so when two or more lymph node regions are affected it's stage 2 when two more two or more lymph node regions are affected above and also below the diaphragm it's stage 3 and in stage 4 there are lot of extra nodal involvement other organs are associated so the stage 4 is very difficult to treat treatment options include the classical chemotherapy and radiotherapy approaches but in many cases where cd20 uh, is the surface marker rituximab is also used for a treatment but we are not going to delve into details about the treatment in this video so i hope this video was enlightening quick and give you a lot of idea about the non hodgkins lymphoma in subsequent video we are going to break it down to pieces and try to understand each of these subtypes in great details so stay tuned see you in the next video